Let's make a video. What's good, you misfits? My name is Ren. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be showing you how to make a video in Caden Live. I'm going to be showing you my personal process of how I make a video. And basically, I'm just going to talk while I'm editing the video I just finished recording. So without further ado, let's jump over to the desktop and we'll get into how I edit videos. So the first thing we're going to do now that we're over on the desktop is that I go ahead and open my folders. File Explorer, that's what it's called. Uh, I use Dolphin because I'm on KDE, but I go ahead and open that, move it over to the other screen, and then we're gonna open up Caden Live, which is gonna open on the wrong screen. No, it's not, it's opening on the right screen. So next we'll go over to my videos folder, open OBS recordings where I've recorded and I should have an MP4, there we are. We are going to right click and I should probably show you this. So in my OBS folder, I have where I record all my stuff. This is the video that's currently being recorded. I'm going to right click. I'm going to cut the file and I'm going to go over to my storage drive where I have videos, Caden Live projects, and I have all these folders with all my different things. This will probably be under tutorial. I'm going to make a new folder. Edit Caden Live. Sure gonna make a new folder again. I'm gonna call it raw. This is where I paste the raw footage that I use. Paste one file, there we are. And we're gonna go ahead and click and drag that into Caden Live. We do wanna convert it to 1080p 60 FPS. And then first thing I always do is allow proxy clips. So you wanna proxy all your clips because it starts to really eat at your computer to start trying to render the preview with full resolution clips. So a proxy makes a lower resolution copy of the clip that it uses in the preview window instead, which makes it a lot easier for you to preview your effects. To do that, all you gotta do is go into settings, go down to configure Caden Live, proxy clips, enable proxy clips, and there's a couple other settings that you can mess around with. Generally, all you need to do is click enable proxy clips and you're good. I think there's one other setting. I can't remember where it is off the top of my head to allow you to do it for large images as well, though images are less of an issue, especially if you're only editing 1080p footage like I am. We're going to just wait for that to go. And uh, while this one is being made into a proxy clip, I'm going to go ahead and grab my other files. So other files that I grab and that I use regularly are going to be my intro video, which I will also go ahead and proxy, which will be done literally a split second because it's just a couple a second or two we're gonna get a go to end card i'm gonna grab the first half of my end card which is just an audio file and then the second half which is actually a video and i'm going to also proxy that there we are and then we're going to grab a few more things so another thing i need to grab if i go back go to effects and we're going to grab my little whoosh sound effect i use for transitions we are going to grab out of let's see sound effects no i don't think i need any of those at least not yet i think that's the only whoosh sound effect that i need Alrighty, so i think the last thing i need is just my little introduction thing which i believe i have under images for some reason yeah images subscribe is this the right one let's find out we're gonna put it in here yep that's the right one cool so i can remove that now and we're going to not proxy that one. So things that are transparent, I tend to not be able to proxy. There may be a setting to let me do that, but I just don't bother. And with that, we are good. Oh wait, there is one more file I need. My background music. I've got a version where I've already lowered the volume for background noise. There we go, that's all I need. And we're gonna move this to the side for now while I edit. I'm gonna grab this, all right. Here we are, this is the beginning. So cut clip, delete that. I'm probably gonna actually zoom in a bit. So I can make this more precise. Yeah, that should be fine. Here we are. Cut clip. And move that away. And I don't need all this. We're going to drag that back. That's where the video actually starts. Um, I moved it way too far back. Now I just need to grab my intro. Slap that in there. Slap that afterwards. And now we've already got the introduction. And there we go. And that's how you do that. So this is what I do every video. I have a little introduction thing. This one, I couldn't think of anything. So I just kind of jumped into it. 
and then I throw my intro in there. So the way you're going to do that is that you just find a point where you want to cut. I will right click cut clip. That's just the habit I've built. There's also a shortcut for it, which I believe there's also the scissors tool, which allow you to just click somewhere and cut, click somewhere and cut, click somewhere and cut, click somewhere and cut. That can make things a lot easier too. Uh, if you're doing a lot of cuts all at once, I tend to edit as I watch the video and do all my jokes and stuff as I watch the video. So it's um sometimes a little confusing. I also need to add another audio track. So right click insert track under audio. This will be the track I use for like the whoosh sound effects or the background music. I'll probably be for the background music. So we're going to actually grab that, slap it on there. Um, did not mean to do that. Forgot it was still on there. And it'll snap into place to be lined up right here. So now as I start playing, you can hear. What's good, you misfits? My and there we go. Now we've got the background music. So that's the basics of cutting the footage going apart. I will typically also cut any gaps like this. So let's listen to this real quick. The Proton Up GUI. This is so yeah, that little gap right there, I'll tend to cut that out because no one wants to have just a second of no talking. And now it's more like this. The Proton Up GUI. This so there we are. And we're gonna also find Yeah, so those little pauses, I think I'm going to cut out as well. I'm going to see if I like it without the pauses. And if not, I can always just control Z and add them back in. So we're going to do that. We're going to do one right there. All right, and let's listen to it. Terminal application to update your Proton GE version for Steam. But this is one with a graphical interface. I actually do like that, so we're going to keep it. I also feel like I should probably cut this one as well. So again, you can see that I use the mouse for most of my editing. I know a lot of people, shortcuts are faster. I'm sure they are, but God, do I love using the mouse. I don't know why. I've just gotten to where like, I'll drag, right click, and then just right, right click cut. I've just gotten into the muscle memory of it. Let's see how that sounds. Interface, and it also allows you to add no. So I actually did like the pause, so I don't want to cut that one out. Interface and it also allows you to add Wine GE, which is a custom fork of wine with the same sort of fixes that Proton GE. Okay, so yeah, that last pause I'm not as crazy about, so we're gonna cut that one out. And we're gonna trim this to there, slap it over there. And how does it sound? Add Wine GE, which is a custom fork of wine with the same sort of fixes that Proton GE has for any games you may want to play that aren't. Okay, that sounds good. Um, what about this? Without further ado, we're going to jump over to the desktop and I'm going to show you how it works. There we go. All right. So we're going to go ahead and cut right here. I think I might cut out this gap as well. My cat is begging to come in, but she was being a brat earlier and jumping all over stuff and making a bunch of noise while I was trying to record. <laughs> Zelda, I love you, but you can't interrupt me right now. It'll only be a couple minutes, literally about 15 minutes, and then you come right back in. So any big gaps, especially we're going to do uh, let's see. Was this, I had two takes in this video. I can't remember if this is the one I wanted to use. No, this was not because I corrected myself later for the name of the program. So I need to find what that was. Is that this part right here? So now that we're on the desktop, we're going. Yes, that's what it was. Okay, so. So yeah, that was a big old chunk that I cut out. <laughs> this is why editing is important. Um, also, this uh, zoom in and zoom out that I'm doing, you do by holding control. So if you scroll normally, you scroll left and right on the timeline. If you hold control, you zoom in and out and in, out and in, out and in. Uh, also, it's easier if you zoom out and then scroll over. You'll zoom in roughly around wherever your mouse is located. I actually don't know if this can record my mouse. There will be a lot of editing in this video I'm recording right now as well. Okay, so. So now that we're on the desktop, we're going to... All right, so you see this big old gap now. This is where we want some of this dead space. There we are. And now I'm going to show you how you do transitions. So my go-to transition is I'm going to split it like this. We're going to line them over like that. So I want this pause to be as long as I want the transition to be. We're going to jump over to the desktop. I'm going to show you how it works. Whoops, that was the wrong button. All right, so about right there. 
is how long I want it to be. And we're going to click right here. This will add the wipe transition. We're going to move it up. And then I'm going to line up to about right here. I want this transition to be about that long. And now we can crop this back to be right here. All right, so I'm going to change this from wipe to slide. I want it to start on this side and end in the middle. This is transparency is fine. I am also going to cut this clip so I can add effects. Effects are the bread and butter of editing. I have a couple of them favorited. So I'm going to go to my blur and sharpen. I'm going to add a box blur to this guy. This guy is going to start off. It's going to do a box blur so you can choose how much it blurs vertically and horizontally. If you just do vertical or horizontal, it'll look like a motion blur. Vertical will look like motion blur going up and down. Horizontal will look like motion blur going left and right. So I'm going to actually crank this up to about, yeah, we'll say 18. I think that's what I use. And now if I watch this, so now that we're on the desktop, we're going to download. So that's actually a little longer than I would like. So we're going to shorten this just a touch that that should do it and this should move right there and shorten that it's all the science it's all the science what works so now that we're on the there we go that looks a lot better now the only issue with it is that it's kind of quiet so we're gonna fix that so again we're gonna add another audio track insert track audio under a3 this will add audio track a4 and now we're going to add that whoosh sound effect that i have i'm going to line it up to be roughly in the middle of the transition i can further check that yeah that's close enough it doesn't need to be exact it just needs to be close enough and now if i watch the transition it works. So now that we're on the desktop, there we are I, it may be a little bit loud, so I may want to turn it down. So for that, I can use one of my audio correction, which is the volume key frameable. Just click and drag that onto there. Click on the first frame, and then I'm going to turn this down. We'll say seven decibels. How does that sound now? Show you how it works. So now that we're on the desk, a little too quiet. So we're going to go back to that. I'm going to do it to minus four decibels. So now that we're on the desktop, that works. All right, we're good. Another thing you can do for a lot of these effects is keyframing. So say I want to do a zoom in that slowly zooms in rather than cuts to being zoom in. For that, I would take, let's find a clip that I want to do that on. Oh, wait, one left before I do that, one last thing. After you've done your transition and stuff, I tend to move these video clips back to the center so that I can do it easier again. You can also, you can right click and ungroup clips so that you can then move the audio and video independently from the two that came together. Since this has no audio, I tend to just delete it and then I can move this audio up to that track and I can minimize the number of tracks if you don't want to do that, which I may end up doing. Right click, delete track, yes. That saves the number of tracks I need, which is always better for performance on your computer. So now let's look for a clip that I want to zoom into, but we'll show you this right here. So let's take a clip, say we wanted to split that one. I'll also go ahead and split the audio because I'll usually want to freeze the audio on these sort of transitions. Go to where I want it to stop. So we'll say right here and I'll line the audio back up so it continues. Now on this clip, you're going to want to use, there's two different ways. You can use either the transformation or I typically use position and zoom for just zoom ins and such. So you're going to want to go to frame one. And if you want it to zoom in slowly, you're going to go to the end, click the little plus button to add a frame and now zoom it in the amount you want. So we'll say 150%. You can then use either the X and Y to position it, or you can just click and drag this to position it, which is usually a lot easier. So we'll do it that way. This will allow it to do this. Actually, I do want to do it to this. This is funny. This is funny. <laughs> this is exactly what I want. So actually, I'm going to undo all this. Okay. Right here is where I want it. 
Okay, cut clip. Cut clip. I actually want to keep the audio right here. I do want to jump. No. Okay, hold on. I know what I'm doing. So, it's all trial and error, trying to figure out what it is you want to do. Cut clip. Line it up right there. There we go. Now, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to drag my clip onto here. I am going to do that zoom, but it's going to be for a longer period of time. Add a frame here. I want to zoom in on that last frame to be 150%. And I'm going to position it the way I want. There we go. And then on this last one, I'm going to make it a jump to 300% on this first frame and I'm going to position it how I want. There we go. So now it's going to look like this. T. Turns out the name was not Proton Up GUI, it was Proton Up QT, and it has a GUI and GUI for it. I got the name wrong. So it's there we are. Up, and that's how you do those sort of like zoom in and jump zooms. It's a lot of jump cuts when it comes to editing YouTube videos. That's how it goes. That's what everyone does. It's uh, also the easiest thing to do, which is just cut where there's audio, drag it to each other. Now you can do a more advanced thing called a J cut, which I have tried to do in some of my videos, but it takes a lot more time to do. Um, and I think for my kind of videos, it's not really necessary, but it is a really cool thing. And I can show you one of those later. I go over to here. So a J cut, the way it's going to work is that you're going to make your cut, cut the clip. You're going to ungroup. Use, you're going to have video cut back to be a little bit after the audio. And then you're going to, if you hold shift, you can select multiple things. And then I'm going to select them, right click. I'm going to group them back together. We're going to split them and then do that. I did that wrong. We're going to extend that out some so that the audio cuts like this. And so that is a J cut because it kind of looks like a J shape. And so it looks like this when you do it, if you watch the preview. On that, I don't know why I clicked it again, but hey, whatever. So we're going to scroll down to the download and we're going to download the X86. You can't quite tell because Again, these sort of videos don't need it, but the idea is that you're transitioning them one aspect of the video at a time. First the audio, then the video, so it's less of a sudden jolt of new information to the person watching it's, oh, the audio changed, and then, oh, the video changed. So it gives them a little bit more time to process it. It makes the transition seem a little bit smoother. It's a very nice thing to do, especially if you're doing very heavily edited content, if you're doing like a lot more cinematic sort of stuff, it's a very good, type of transition to do. My videos don't really need it though, because as you could see, you really couldn't tell the difference, could you? Because if I just turn this into cutting like that, and then I right click, ungroup, do that, shift, and then trim that there, shift, select, and group. If I do it like this. Hey, whatever. So we're gonna scroll down to the download and we're going to download the... You can definitely tell a difference, but it's not a huge one enough, especially for this type of video. My content is the type of stuff where you don't really need to do really fancy cuts like this. If you're planning to do more cinematic things, like you're putting together music videos and stuff like that, a J cut will be your friend. J cuts will be amazing for that, depending on how it's done. So for example, if the song is either going to a part where it's just background instrumentals and you're doing like a little mini cinematic scene where they're talking with actors and such, that would be a fantastic time for J cuts because that'll make it look a lot more professional, be smoother transitions. Informational YouTube videos, it's not really worth it, especially the amount of extra time it takes to edit them. Your normal straight jump cuts are fine for that sort of situation. Again, pick the tool that you think works in the situation you are in. If you think the J cuts are going to make your video videos and your content look 
just so much nicer and give that that little bit extra polish that you need, by all means do it. Just know that it takes a little bit more time. If you feel like it doesn't seem to make much of a difference, like it does with the kind of content I'm making, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it. It's totally up to you. You definitely just want to make sure that it looks nice and is visually interesting and that it's entertaining to watch at the end of the day. How you get there doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the tools available to you for you to try to get there. But that is going to be the basics of all the editing I do. I use basically just those. There is a little bit more you can do. Like, for example, I may want to colorize or saturation. I actually tend to, if I want to make something jump to black and white, I'll use colorize because it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, because I can just turn the saturation down. That's a little bit easier to see as compared to if I delete that and turn on saturation and just turn it down. You can tell the hair and the background blend together a little bit more, but I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to bother doing it. If I want something to fade into black and white, I'll use saturation. If I want something to jump to black and white, I'll use colorize. Same tools, different tools, same result. Almost said it backwards. That's generally the basics of how I edit my videos. Now, the last little thing I'll show you is how I slap in my little intro video, which is just, I have pre-made this video and it has a transparency layer. So I made it uh, and exported it as a WebM with an alpha, which was a VP9, I think was the codec used. It's one of the open source codecs that is actually surprisingly popular. I think YouTube uses it now instead of H.264. We're just going to find the point where I say my name and that's where I'm going to throw that in. What's good, you misfits? My name is Red. Welcome back to the channel. And OK, so that actually lines up to be where I want it to be right here. So. What's good, you misfits? My name is Red. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at a tool to make your Proton experience better. In Red. Mm. I'm not super happy with how that lines up. I think I might move it just a little bit further down. What's good, you misfits? My name is Red. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at a tool to make your Proton experience better in Lutris and a couple other. Yeah, I like that. I like that a little bit more. Lastly, the biggest thing, something I probably should have done much earlier on uh, now that I think about it, but that is to save. Hold Control S and save. You want to save this. So those are the basics of how I edit in Caden Live. Hopefully this helped you out. This gave you some ideas on what you can do. Again, this was a very bare bones sort of thing. I didn't go super in depth. Maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. But if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. You hit subscribe to get notified when I post new videos and click the bell in order to actually get notifications. You can support these videos over on Patreon. I have that link down below. You can get them a week early if I remember to properly post them, which I haven't for the past two weeks because I got rushed. Uh, hopefully that will be changing because I'm building a backlog again. And also you can check me out over on twitch.tv slash it's where you can see me do stuff live. I'm going to be recording some videos live, hopefully in the near future. That will be some cool stuff such as uh, console mods and things of that nature. So stay tuned for that. I will hopefully see you all next time. Thank you again for watching. Peace out. God, that's going to take so long to edit.